to God's house that we call Friendship United Methodist Church. I guess y'all can probably tell by my voice that I'm not Brother Delroy this morning. <laughs> Brother Delroy had been called to work this morning, so I have to tell you that Thursday night, the middle of the night, I woke up in just absolute cold sweat. And I thought, what am I ever going to do if Brother Delroy is not going to be there? <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning he called and said, Brother Wayne, I'm sorry to tell you, but I can't be there tomorrow Sunday morning. So, here I am. Do we have any announcements this morning that we need to make that uh, anyone has? I want to remind uh, those who are members of the PPR committee that next Sunday after the service we will have a meeting to evaluate your pastor. And uh, I meant to bring the form today so everybody would have it and I forgot it. So uh, next Sunday after the service those who are on the PPR committee please stay for a few minutes and uh, and uh, take care of that evaluation. Also, again, our charge conference is going to be held, our annual charge conference is going to be held November the 18th, I believe it is, at 7 o'clock at North Fed. But that's a ways away yet, uh, and uh, we'll keep, uh, keep uh, announcing that as we prepare for our annual conference, our annual charge conference. Are there any other announcements that our first disciple class is today at 4 o'clock. We met last Sunday just for an uh, uh, orientation and we will actually begin that class this Sunday at 4 o'clock. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? You! Who? Yes, your birthday too? Saturday. Oh, that's her. Saturday the 19th. Okay, well, let's sing happy birthday. Father God, I pray for the blessing upon all those 
who have taken the responsibilities as leaders in your church. I pray for your blessing upon them as they make decisions and administration of your church. Father God, we thank you that we are your children, that you guide us daily and assure us in our commitment that we may be as a church and that we may bring justice against all oppression to the glory of your name. Father God, I pray that you will bless this worship today. Open our hearts and our minds to the Holy Spirit which dwells in this place, that we may be a purveyor of truth and love to your community and to your world. May we as children of God take our faith outside the walls of this building into the hearts of those who would dwell among us. May we live the life that you chose for us and follow your great command to go and to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Father, for God, we pray that you will bless and keep those who are not able to be with us this morning. Place a hedge of protection around them that they may return to your house next Sunday to be in humble worship of your holy and sovereign name. As we worship here this morning, Father God, let us remember who we address our worship towards. Let us remember that it is Jesus Christ our Lord who in His mighty deeds healed the sick and the discord, who chose even in His mighty power to be a humble servant, suffering and dying for the sins of all mankind. God of all ages, in Your sight, nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. Let us not forget the peril of last Friday, September the 11th, 2001. Now as our nation is troubled, be near to judge and save us. May our leaders be led by your wisdom. May they search and see it clearly. As we have turned from your way, Father, redeem us and help us to repent. Give us your light and your truth. Let us then be our guide through Jesus Christ who is the Lord of this world and our Savior. Amen? Amen. <coughs> our opening hymn for this morning is hymn number 64, and that's actually in the red book, not the brown book. Holy, 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 and we will sing all verses.
our responsive reading for today is from Psalms 19, found on page 750 of your red hymnal. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day, the Lord speaks, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, their voice is not heard. Yet their voice will come for all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and runs its course with joy like a strong man. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its surface is in the ends of the and there is nothing hid from you. The law of the Lord is perfect, revolving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is true, making wise and simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is true, and enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant born, and keeping them there is great reward. But we can understand one's own errors, and bear me from the evil laws. Also keep your servant from the insult. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. If you will now rise please and repeat after me with the affirmation of faith found in the inside of your bulletin the apostles creed i believe in god father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered on the pontius father was crucified dead in the very the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. sister had a congestive heart failure Friday and then that Friday night his wife had a stroke. So. Good. Well, we'll keep, uh, keep that family in our prayers for healing and for peace and comfort during that time. Any others? Well how about praises this morning? What a beautiful, what a beautiful God-given day we have today. Amen. 
even if Brother Wayne don't have any water on his house. <laughs> any, any other praises? We just all praise God for every moment, every breath that we take Amen. is a gift from God. We need to praise Him all, always for it. Let us then go before the Lord in our corporate prayer. Father God, we come before You in humble prayer, thanking You for all the gifts You've given us. We know, Father, that You are the one true living God, and all things come from You. We know that without You, we can do nothing, Father. But with You, all things are possible. Father, we ask that You be with those who are not with us again today. We pray that You will bless them and give them peace and give them a little comfort, Father, as, and a little rest, perhaps, for those who are weary. We know that You are in control. We know that all things are in Your hands. We know, Father, that You are the great physician, that all healing comes through you. We pray that you will heal those who are sick. Pray that you will heal those who need your comfort. For you are the great comforter as well. You are the great counselor. We know that all we have to do is ask that the door be opened and you will be there to comfort us, to give us peace Father, we thank you for those young men and women who are in uniform around the world today to help to bring us the peace that we enjoy in this country. For we look at what's going on in some of the other places of the world. We look at the refuge situation in the Middle East. And we pray, Father, that you will resolve those problems for those people. We pray that you will bring our young men and our young women home, home, to be with their families, to be with their church families. Guide them and keep a hedge of protection around them as they serve this country and serve you in a faraway land. Father, we thank you today, most of all, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to live, taught us how to love, and by his very example, he taught us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Praise Choir will sing Whispering Hope in the Brown Book, page 245. Please join if you're able.
now is the time in our service when we will dedicate our tithes and our offering. Let us pray. Glorious God, we rejoice in your goodness. You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Messiah, the Savior of the world. He reveals your way of self-giving love. Help us to set our minds on divine things. May our lives contribute to the spread of your good news, which is of the ultimate importance in our world today. We ask this for the sake of Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
to get your heart stirring a little bit this morning? I don't know. The reading of our scripture this morning comes to us from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should presume, presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships for an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great both. Consider what is what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds and reptiles and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So today we're going to continue our discussion from James about spiritual maturity. And today we're going to focus on the smallest yet the largest troublemaker in the world, the tongue. In previous lessons, James has taught us and showed us that the mature Christian is patient in testing, and he is also very mature in the practice of his truth. Today he's going to give us this third characteristic about the mature Christian, and probably the most difficult one, can he control the power of his tongue? You know, the gift of speech it's probably the greatest gift that God has given to mankind, isn't it? And He only gave it to mankind in His creation. I guess He thought we could handle it. You know, we can, we can praise God with our voice, with our speech. We can pray. We can preach and teach the Gospel. We can lead others to Jesus Christ. And that is a marvelous thing that we can do. But we can also curse men, it says. And we can also lie and cause irreparable damage to someone's reputation perhaps. And worst of all, we can break a heart with our tongue, can't we? James kind of gives us today six different pictures of representation of the tongue. He tells us that the tongue is like a bit. It's like a rudder. 
It's like fire. It's like animals. And it's like a fountain or water. And a fig tree. A tree. Now that's a broad spectrum of different things, isn't it? But in doing this, he gives us three examples of three particular powers that we have in the use of the tongue. In verses 1 through 4, he tells us about the power of the tongue to direct. Now it seems as we read this scripture this morning that there are certain people within James's listening area or reading area that want to be teachers or want to be perhaps religious leaders. And he warns them very, very, very plainly that that is a very hard, a very tough responsibility. There's a lot of accountability that's required for those offices. But he also warns them that they can sin by the tongue in these offices. You see, he says, we all stumble in many ways. You know, this verse is one that gives pastors a lot of heartburn. <laughs> because we know of the responsibility. We know of the accountability that we take. But we also know that we are capable of stumbling. I stumbled last Sunday that I don't know whether y'all... I bet you some of you picked it up. I used a wrong verse that I gave an example of the Ten Commandments. I said, as it is in Deuteronomy chapter 20. Well, actually, it's in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 6. And I did not catch that myself until I looked at the video on Monday morning. And I said, oh! You see, we all stumble at one time or the other. James uses this small member tongue in relationship to the entire body. Because you know, words become deeds, don't they? And we have to be careful about the words we say and make sure they don't produce the deeds that we don't want to happen. He uses as the first example this morning of the tongue, he uses the word bit. He says when we put a bit in a horse's mouth, we can control that horse. Now Pat wasn't able to be here this morning because as I said, we don't have any water on our house. And I had to get in my truck and drive to a friend's house at 7.30 this morning to take a shower, but I, I did do that by the way. <laughs> she used to show horses. And she did what was called dressage, right? She rode dressage. And if you know what that is, that's kind of like making a, a horse dance a little bit, making him do certain things at certain places, in certain times, to be judged. Pat knew the power of that little bit in that powerful big horse's mouth and how she could make him turn the way she wanted to. And I have to tell you, it was beautiful. James uses the ship as an example of a very small rudder which drives a huge vessel. Well, my experience is a little bit different. My experience, you see, is on the rudder of an airplane. Very small rudder compared to the overall size of the airplane. The attacked aircraft that I flew had 3,000 horsepower. It was a radial engine. It swung a 13-foot diameter four-bladed propeller. And that engine had more power than that little bitty rudder back there could possibly handle. So you had to be very cautious, particularly on takeoff. You see, you had to use almost full right rudder 
on takeoff to offset that left torque of that propeller turning, if you gave it too much power, it would literally pull it off the runway and crash. When it was landing that airplane on an aircraft carrier, if we missed that third wire, and we had to apply the power to go around to fly again and come around and make another approach and probably another one and another one and another one. If you use that power at the wrong time, that airplane would literally torque roll off of the deck and into the drink. And brothers and sisters, that would spoil your whole day. Young pilots were guilty of that often. When they missed that third wire and they saw the end of that boat coming up, they would oftentimes apply too much power and torque roll that aircraft right off the deck. You see, the human tongue has to consider the same outside forces. We as human beings in our old nature we know that we are subject to sin, don't we? The sin within us and that pressure that is outside of us will oftentimes seek to control our tongue. But when we have Jesus Christ in that new nature, that new love, you see, we don't have to worry about saying the wrong thing then. Or we don't have to worry about, worry about maybe saying the right thing in the wrong way. Which is sometimes just about as bad. King Solomon gives us a warning in Proverbs. In Proverbs 18.21. And I want you all to start bringing your Bible so you can look at that and make sure that I'm doing the right verses, okay? <laughs> 1821, King Solomon said, Life and death is power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. David knew a little bit about this same thing. You see, he believed that the heart was the key to all right speech. And brothers and sisters, when we have Jesus Christ in our heart, <clears throat> We also have Him in our lips, don't we? Amen. James tells us in <clears throat> verses 5 through 8 how the power of the tongue can destroy. He uses the analogy of fire and of animals. Now we certainly know how fire can destroy. We know that fire burns and hurts the tongue can burn and hurt as well. A fiery tongue, brothers and sisters, can do irreparable damage to a loving relationship. And I want to tell you that that old saying, you can't put the genie back in the bottle, is ever so true in this incident. You see, once those words are said, no amount of apology, no amount of I'm sorry, and I know this from experience, by the way, can cleanse and erase those words that you spoke. Amen. He uses the animal as an analogy. You see, the tongue can be like a wild animal. It can search out and destroy something. It can destroy a relationship. It can kill a relationship. He uses the deadly poison of a poisonous animal. There are poison tongues as well, don't we know? And the ironic thing about a poison tongue is that it works secretly. It works very slowly. 
before it kills, doesn't it? Our scripture says man cannot tame the tongue. But brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that God can tame the tongue. God can instill a fire in the tongue, but a controlled fire. Think about Dr. Billy Graham. Think about a gentleman named D.L. Moody. Think about John Wesley. God gave them a fiery tongue, but he controlled that tongue. So that they were a blessing to many, many people. They were a mighty tool in winning people to Christ and in building up the kingdom of God. James tells us in verse 9 through 12 the good news about the tongue. You see, he says the tongue can also be have the power of delight. And he uses the fountain or water and the tree, the fig tree, as an example. You see, a, the cool water of a fountain gives man life, right? We can go without food for <clears throat> some period of time, but we can only go without water for five days, I think it is, something like that. Proverbs 13 and 14 tells us that the law of the wise is a fountain of life. Water is life-giving. The Word can be life-giving. Water is cleansing. The Word of God is a fountain of of life that cleanses our soul. He uses a tree as an example. You see, the tongue is like a tree. It can give shelter to a weary traveler. It can give food to a hungry soul. <coughs> The Word given properly. Jesus told us in John 6, 63, The Word that I speak to you, they are the Spirit. They are life. Brothers and sisters, if we choose, and we must choose, to use our tongue for the power of delight, and not for the power to destroy or the power to guide. <clears throat> and in order for us to do that, you and I have got to meet with the Lord daily, every day, and to learn from Him. James talks about a tree. Well, you know, a tree has a root system that it has to maintain and has to have in order to have life. We need to be spiritually rooted in the Word of God in order for us to have life. <coughs> we need to pray. We need to meditate. We need to seek that Holy Spirit, that Spirit of God, with all of our heart so that we can see God's Word of truth and life. And then we can use our tongue to pronounce to others the grace of God. That delightful grace of God.
What we need to remember, though, is that the tongue is not the problem. The heart is the problem. As long as we allow our heart to be filled with the Word of God, He can use us to be a blessing to others. You see, He can make us to be a cool oasis of fountain and trees in a desert of pain and suffering. He can cause us to show others the way of life and the delight even of the trials that we all go through every day in life. The tongue is a very small member, but brothers and sisters, it is very, very powerful. I challenge you today to give your heart to God. To give that tongue to God. Let Him control it. Amen. So that you may ask Him to allow you to serve others through Him. Amen. And be a blessing and to be a delight. Amen? Amen. Our closing hymn for today is in the Red Book, page 351, and we'll sing 1, 3, and 4. Please stand if you're able. Until we meet again here in his church next Sunday, may he hold you in the hollow of his hands. Amen. Amen. Amen.